Cash money, yeah, it's easy to get drained. Relationships are not about brains. Trying to raise a family is so insane. He tries to keep politics off the brain. But saying in the questions, he might to scream. This is that entrepreneurship is his thing. Society, the is reality. That's my dad. That's my dad. Welcome. I am your boy, your host, BBT, and you can ask me anything. How y'all doing today? Happy Thursday. Happy payday for some folks. I guess some people, if you get direct deposit, it goes through the day. I get paid today. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about, yes, man, that money, that payday. I know you're super excited. But anyway, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Me, we're dealing with a tropical storm. The kids didn't have school yesterday. They're back today. But, yeah, it rained a lot. It didn't do too much where I'm at. But I know other parts of Florida got hit pretty bad. So just back, glad to be back on track. I hope the weather is great wherever you are in the world. And I'm going to jump right into this show. Okay, we're going to start off with some tweet tweets of the day. Tweet, 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 tweet. The first one is, what's the difference between anti-Semitism and racism? Hmm. You say, hmm. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Please leave a comment or feel free to chime in. The next tweet of the day is, Black Israelites in front of the Barclays Center in support of Kyrie Irving. Yes, yes, yes. The next tweet of the day is breaking Meta, formerly known as Facebook, fires 11,000 employees, 13% of the global work- workforce fired effective immediately, fired employees to get 16 weeks pay as compensation. The recession, the recession is here. So I'm going to do a twofer. The next one says multiple economists are suggesting that a recession is coming. Here are five ways how you can prepare for a possible recession. Have an emergency fund, live with your means, invest your money for the long term, clear all your debts, do not buy expensive liabilities. Yeah, I got a bold, bold prediction. I think that, uh, I think the social media is on the decline. I had a conversation with some guys at the bar the other day, and I really do. I have this belief, and it's not a belief, it's fact. Nothing goes straight up, and I think that social media has been killing it for a very, very long time, and I think we're due for a downfall. Now, what does that mean? I don't exactly know, but I think what's going to happen next, you've seen it with Twitter. Twitter is charging for verification badges. I think the Facebook with all the losses that they're taking, I think that they're going to start charging. And then I think people are going to run. They're going to run from Facebook. They're going to run from Instagram. And I just think that as a whole, you're already seeing, even though Twitter is growing, you see some pushback. I think you're going to start to see the rumblings across all the social media platforms and people are going to start to run. And I think we're going to see a downfall. I don't know if you can really um, equate it into numbers, but I definitely see social media going the other way. Next tweet. If anyone needs a little motivation today, call 707-873-7862. It's a school project where kindergartners give you a pep talk. It's so cute and it's automated. I actually call. It's pretty dope. Definitely, if you need to pick me up, call that number. Them kids are on the sum. It's very, very powerful, and it's really funny. The next tweet, Marco Rubio. If Florida can count 7.5 million ballots in five hours, how can it take two days for some states to count less than 2 million? Yeah, it's crazy how there's a lack of consistency across the states when it comes to votes, counting votes, how the system works, how how it's tracked. It's just interesting. It's almost like baseball. They don't want to fix it. They want the drama. They want the the excitement to build up. But if some states can tally and get their votes in like that, how come everybody can't do that? Now, I understand there's time differences. There's uh, certain states allow the, the the polls to stay later and certain things like that. 
But it's bullshit. They could standardize the process across every state, and we we should know within a few moments who won what. Same thing with the presidency. Next tweet. Uh, DC MMA, that's uh, Daniel Cormier, uh, formerly of the UFC. He gives his top fighters of all time. Number one, Floyd Mayweather. Number two, Khabib. Number three, Muhammad Ali. Four, Georgia St. Saint Pierre. And number five, Amanda Nunes. What do you think about that list? I would, even though he's had some some issues with, with, with drugs and, and steroids, I would definitely put John Bones Jones on there. And I know Cormier won't put him on there because he beat him and he accused him of beating him because of steroids. But I've never seen a fighter dominate like John Bones Jones. Maybe Khabib, but Khabib was more of a wrestler. Bones Jones, I think, in my opinion, is the best UFC fighter. And I would put him number two under Floyd than Khabib, Muhammad Ali. I'm iffy on uh, George St. Pierre. I don't know much about him. Amanda Nunez, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she did lose that fight, uh, I guess, her fight before last, but she has definitely dominated women's fighting. So, next tweet. Jacques Vaughn compares his new head coaching job to his marriage. I might not have been her first choice, and we've been together 20. What's wrong with this dude? Why? That, some things you got to keep to yourself. I might not have been her first choice. <laughs> Next week, great news. The good people of Oregon just voted to remove slavery as a punishment for crime from their constitution. The ugly 450,000 people voted to keep slavery. This is very insightful. Interesting. I mean, I, I got to look this up. Slavery is still on the ballot. Woo. All right, next week. Reparations, immigrations, climate change, the old establishment with the white working class, school busing, defeat Trump. That's all the agendas, but all I want to hear about is reparations. Those are the tweets for the day. Have finally come. <clears throat> yeah, that's just, yeah, I think that reparations should definitely be on the ballot. Before I go into something a little funny, I want to play this because at the end of the day, no one can see it better than this man. So let me play this. Let me let the man, the myth, the legend go. At the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farm. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with, and this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. So, yeah, there you have it. That's the, uh, yeah, 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 there you have it. This the Martin they didn't want you to hear. We coming to get our check, and I believe this is a little bit before he was assassinated. Uh, don't quote me on that. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe, I think that that was right before that happened. But, yeah, it's it's insane. It's it's. We've gotten to a point where we've made reparations such a joke, even within our community, it, and that people don't take it serious. Like, no, this is a real thing. People have gotten help. And the thing about it, we've seen it during COVID. They can give low interest loans. But anyway, I'm going to share y'all some old Facebook posts I wrote. I, 
I've been talking about reparations for a very, very long time. So I'm going to read some of these uh, posts that I made, and then I'll come and talk a little bit more in terms of reparations. And then I'm going to talk about a few other things to get out of here. But anyway, <clears throat> the first post that I made, this was back in, uh, let's see, hold up. This was back in June 1st, 2020. This was during COVID. And I said, uh, well, this was from Bob Johnson on CNBC. He said, for 200 plus years of slavery, slavery is labor taken without compensation. This is wealth transfer, which we have not participated in. Allow African Americans to receive the wealth owed to them for past damages. Stimulus check needs to be paid to blacks now in the form of cash. We need to have serious conversation on black economics in the form of reparations. Yeah, I mean... COVID showed you a lot, y'all. Open your eyes. Stop thinking it's a joke. I know a lot of comedians talk about it. They make fun of it. But this is a real thing. This is how other cultures and communities have been able to build businesses, build communities. You know, they don't have to give us anything. You can loan it to us. Low interest loans. We did it with COVID. We did it with SPA. We mass, mass, it was mass produced, meaning they gave it to so many people. There needs to be a reparations bill on the ballot. And if we don't force that, what are we doing? I mean, like, like Martin Luther King said, they try, they, 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 they spin it and they get us to believe you yeah, pull yourself up by the bootstrap while wow, they've been getting this help the entire time. Do you ever just drive in, in, in certain neighborhoods and communities say, how did they afford this? Or you go into this and say, how did they afford that? Was their credit perfect? Because I know I couldn't get a loan to, get a building or to rent a space. How was they able to get this? And then you go in there and say, damn, how were they able to afford all this furniture? How was they able to do this and this and that? They were getting help. We need help. But anyway, my next one is <clears throat> July 18, 2020. I said, remove the black men, destroy the black family. Mass incarceration was genius and it's still happening today after reparations. Prison form should be our next biggest fight. What they did to us uh, as a result, the war on drugs were horrific, and we just accept the narrative because we believe everything the media tells us. The entire ju judicial system needs to be revamped. This is what the protest should be about. So I didn't go too much in reparations with that, but it touched on mass incarcerations, which is another big part of destroying the black family. And if you ever want a good book to read regarding mass incarcerations, definitely uh, pick up the new Jim Crow because reparations does tie into this because we were taken from our families back in slavery and then mass incarcerations the way they do it now. And that's put us behind too. We didn't have two uh, parent households. We didn't have the opportunity to save, to create opportunities for future generations. We had to just figure it out. And not only did we not have trust and opportunities to take risks, to start businesses, to create different concepts and stuff like that, we had to start on our own and start not only are we trying to create a better future for our kids, we're trying to get ahead based on how far behind we started. So it just all goes together. So yes, definitely put reparation on the bill. Next one. I heard this the other day, no reparations, no vote. I see this is an amazing opportunity to unite and get what we deserve. People are so eager to show their I voted sticker BS. But when in this country, this history of this country has voting ever helped the black community as a whole. Obviously our vote is important, but we have to, we have yet to receive any direct benefits. Yes. People die for our right to vote, but what are we really voting for? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, they got the, what? No effing, no, no, um, no vote, no effing, something like that. I saw a parody on somebody's page and then, you know, they have things like vax that ass up and certain things like that. Like, why couldn't we do a big push for no reparations, no vote? You know, reparations have finally come. I mean, it's a lot of do different jingles we could do to really get support behind this movement. But this is a real thing, real thing. So put reparations on the bill. Next thing. So I've said this June 30th, 2020, we admire these big companies, but we have to realize they got help. When you have access to the fake money system, it affords you the opportunity to build some amazing things. Trust me, folks, reparations should be the main thing your discretion when it comes to social injustices. An extra 20 to 50K can help you launch that business you've always wanted to do. They got it and you need it. Just have to keep asking for it. what is rightfully yours. Yes, yes, yes. I'm saying. 
I did that so I could drink my tea. Yeah, I mean, anyway, next one. So why do people think it's a joke when we discuss reparations? This should be the number one topic of discussion now and forever when it comes to us. Black people need to unite and get what we deserve. So this is a history of reparations payment. I pulled this a while ago um, in 1990. No, that started down here in 1965, the present, the USA, slavery and Jim Crow. No, that's the African-American descendants. But then you see all the other ones. 1.6 billion to Japanese American 1990, uh, 25 to Holocaust survivors, Jewish claims of Austria, 1988 Canada, 250 square miles of land, India's and Eskimos, 1988 Canada, 230 million Japanese Canadians. So you can read through the rest. I mean, obviously, when you make a mistake, you pay for it. But for some reason, we don't get paid for it. So some people might say affirmative action, but I, I mean, I would love to hear a really good debate on fir- affirmative action, affirmative action, because I think affirmative action just gave us the opportunity to just participate. I don't think it really gave us the opportunity to get ahead. Now, some people may argue that, but um, yeah, I mean, for us to get jobs, um, be in situations where we're still at the mercy of our oppressor, then I'm not sure that's really helping. I guess maybe it's help, but no, forget it for me. I'm talking about reparations. Put that shit on the bill. The next one, and I think this is the last one, and this is honest about me, so I, I, I want you to hear this. I love President Obama. He's my favorite president of all time. With that said, he did nothing for me as a black small business owner and as a person working extremely hard to get ahead. In fact, if he puts things in place that hurt me, as a, he put things in place that hurt me as a business owner like the uh, Obamacare. It really hurt. Um, I can go into detail with that, but it really, really hurt. Regardless, we got through it and it's all good. I did think that there should have been some type of reparations bill or some incentive program for being a small business owner as a minority. So I personally have no issue with Ice Cube trying to negotiate an agreement to improve the financial situation within black America. I've listened to Red Biden's plan and I don't see the plan. Trump is Trump, and I honestly believe he loses this less. I truly believe we should not knock someone for trying to improve the economics of black America. Yeah, I was talking about the CWBA, the contract with black America that Ice Cube posed. I think that it was, I think it was smart, uh, but obviously he didn't get the support that he needed to push it through uh, until a point where Biden said, I will talk to you once I get in the office. And I still think he has not talked to him. But yeah, I, I, you know, going back to President Obama, I definitely felt like there should have been some type of fund or some type of program in place, like small interest, low interest loans to people who show that they're trying to create, that they're trying to build businesses like and mass produce this. Like we need opportunities to get funding, to compete, to create, to inspire, to build to build back better. That should be the build back better, given the people that were hurt the most during the tragedies of this country, giving them an opportunity to compete, to participate. And it's not hard to do. Like for me, I don't want you to hand me anything. I don't want you to give me nothing. I would like just like an opportunity for funding. Now I have been fortunate because I've been at this for a while. I have received some opportunities that allowed me to to try to compete. I mean, a lot of was what a lot of it was. Well, I want to say a lot of it. Most of it was inspired by COVID, because they had to mass produce something for everyone. It wasn't specific for blacks and black Americans. But uh, yeah, I have had the opportunity to uh, participate in those things. But me seeing that and knowing that that is a possibility is something that should be on the table now. So put reparations on the ballot, on the bill, whatever you want to call it. So that's all of my past. Oh, shoot. That's some of my past thoughts in terms of reparations. I just think that it's a real thing. I think that black folks need to understand that it's a real thing. And I think that we need to really, really support and get behind this movement. I know there was like a reparations rally. Uh, I didn't hear much about it. I heard about it, like, I guess, as it was happening and after the fact. I think it was in D.C. I think Dr. Boyce was behind a few others. But 
it's almost like a lot of people see that and they just kind of look at it and laugh. That's not a real thing. And I'm like, damn, like, come on, y'all. Like, I definitely believe that a lot of people that do, we're old. I think that it doesn't have to be something where you're just handing us the money. It could be in the form of low interest loans or loans that are forgiven, like they did with the PP, PPP. Um, yeah, payback protection program. Yeah, PPP. So, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that. Let me jump into this thing here with, uh, I think, hold up. Oh, yeah, here we go. I wanted to jump into this. You know, I got to talk a little bit about Kyrie before I get up out of here. So let me play this really quick. I hope y'all having a great day. Like, I'm super excited today because the day's kind of like my chill day. I get to relax. So let's do this. We got to talk about Brother Kyrie. Heartedly say, I know Kyrie Irving is not anti Semitic. When given the chance to say, Are you anti Semitic or not? He didn't say, No, I'm not anti Semitic. At the press conference, tell us about that movie why he did. He said, Stop dehumanizing me. And the movie is saying, White Jews invented the Holocaust and six million Jews didn't get killed. Okay, I, I know that. So, really quick, uh, one, Kyrie did say he wasn't anti Semitic. And I've been reading the book. Obviously, I'm not finished with it yet. Oh, I didn't see the film. So maybe the film did say that. But I don't think that it said that uh, Jews created the Holocaust, but I could be wrong. So anyway, let me let them keep on. Right. It's a gigantic historical record. Jewish people know when you dehumanize us this way, we know what's around the corner. So in that same statement as those are the tropes that dehumanize Jewish people, the same buck breaking. Was that? I don't really know what that means, to be perfectly honest. The slave masters would bring the buck, the one that gets out of line. So all the other slaves would see lash after lash showed them the power to set an example. This is what you must do to fall in line. So when we see the six things that Kyrie must do to get his job back, right? that's. So, yeah, there you go. I think that the. Uh... Nick Cannon nailed it. I think that I don't like the term buck breaking to me. That just, I don't, I don't like that term. So I won't be saying that term, but I do think they do a very good job. But when you do get out of line, we're going to show you. So no one else wants to try to rebel. It's, it's, it's a method. It's a tactic that's worked. I mean, if you watched enough slave movies, or you just understand the concept as a whole. You prove. I mean, one of the movies is a funny movie, uh, Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. You know, them, the boys kept trying to escape. And the moment that they did, they put them up, they, they beat them, and they just made an example. You try this, we're going to tear your ass up. And so they do it differently now in this new age where we're going to make you apologize. We are going to... Um, we're going to destroy your reputation. We're going to make people hate you. We're going to call you an anti-Semite. We're going to call you a whole bunch of names. And that's the form of, in their terminology, but breaking, buck breaking. I don't like it, but it is what it is. So I got one more video I am going to show, and then I'm out of here. Let's get rid of that. And let's do this. Let's do this. Let's rewind this. This is from Jay Williams uh, Twitter or Instagram. Every day of my life, I approach it with a state of empathy, right? Regardless of what color, what creed, what race you are, I look at people as human beings. I think that's important. But life is always about taking a stand and holding principles. So I want to explain what I feel like my stance is as a black male in this world, okay? And conversations that I've had with my brothers and sisters in the black community. And I want you guys to empathize with it and hear me on it. So when I hear what Kyrie Irving has to go through in order to be reinstated, I'm appalled. I'm appalled. 
And let me give you examples of how I feel like we don't have the same energy and hold other people who have dealt with racial tropes accountable. So when Sarah Silverman does blackface, or when Don Imus says nappy-headed hoes, or when Howard Stern calls somebody the N-word in a skit, or when Brett Favre takes money from the state of Mississippi, we don't ask them to get sensitivity training. We don't ask them to donate $500,000. We don't ask them to meet with the Black National Caucus. They apologize. And then, you know what? The rest of the world moves on. But what I feel like is happening here, and that's how in the Black community, like we've been told that's how the process works, right? Think about that, Bert. That's how the process works. Oh, somebody does a blackface. It was a misunderstanding. We got it. Okay. You know, is that person really racist? Probably not. Was it ignorant? Probably so. Okay. We understand it. We move forward. We don't like it. We would love to hold them accountable. But society and having a lot of black people in positions of power, we don't have the government ability to do that. But what we feel like happens with Kyrie is even after an apology, it's not enough. We feel like there needs to be more. And a lot of people I've spoken to over the last couple of days talk about this thing, older mentors of mine talk about buck breaking. It's so we talk about tropes. This is something that we feel like in the black community that happened way back in the day where there was a slave that was defiant, right? He got broken in front of everybody in order to show that he was not in a position of power. And that at the end of the day, he had to do what he was told to do because that's what was mandated of him. And there's a bigger situation going on. What's happening with Kyrie Irving? And that's the one to be there to say you don't want him to be there. But we should hold everybody accountable, even owners of teams accountable with things that are happening in other countries, i.e. China and Uyghurs and the Muslim genocide that is occurring. And we hear Ennis Cantor talk about, but we don't keep the same energy for everybody. We pick and choose what conversational points we want to make more polarizing. And I might lose my job. I might lose deal opportunities in the future for speaking out about even the platforms that continue to promote and profit a movie that is considered anti-Semitic to billions of people. They don't have to be accountable. Who is accountable? But we're going to put everything on the shoulders of Kyrie Irving, who, even though he said, I cannot be anti-Semitic, because if I know where I came from, stating that he's one of the four lost tribes. He's saying that blacks and Jews come from the same entity, the same thing. But we don't want to understand nuance. We want to be triggered by words. And we like fire. And we like things that are, you know, going viral on social media. And everybody has some kind of hot take. And we're calling people idiots. And we're calling people names because that's, that's what we do. We just destroy each other. I ain't going to destroy each other, man. I'm not going to do that. Is Kyrie Irving anti-Semitic? Hell no. Could he have gone about it maybe a different way? That's what I would have advised him to do. But I'm not going to let you guys sit out here and make this dude out to be like he is a villain, like he is a bad person. He is looking to explore his heritage. Now, you can crucify me if you want. I don't give a damn anymore. It's time for people to start speaking out with nuance and speaking out on the principles they stand for. That's all I'll say. Shout out to Jay Williams. God, they did it again. Jay, you won me over, bro. You won me over, man. I almost had a tear. You nailed that. You nailed that. You nailed that. You nailed that. I think that at the end of the day, it's different energy for different folks, man. People can do crazy shit and we just sweep it under the rug. It just goes away. We do something or... Once again, I got to use that terminology, buck breaking. That's what they do. We going to make Kyrie an example. We going to make Ye an example. And they probably going to fuck with Jay Williams. They probably are. If you start to see some him off of your favorite shows and stuff like that, they don't like when folks speak out like that. So, but I hope with Jay, what I heard from Jay is like, I'm tired of this shit. Like, yeah, you know, I won't say anything. Like he said at the end, if it was him, he would advise Kyrie or he said he would advise Kyrie to go about it a different way. But I think we got to stop looking for this perfect way to do things. When you feel it, you speak it. You know, 
Kyrie has, has said over and over again, my intentions were not to hurt anyone. I'm just exploring my history, and this is how, how I feel. I feel strongly about it. And to, to, to finish my point, I think that what this is starting is people are getting tired because they're seeing the bullshit. Like, hold up, man. Wait, you going to do this to one of my own? That means you could do this to me. So because you could do this to me, I'm not. I'm gonna stop being afraid. I'm gonna stop being fearful to speak up and speak out because at the end of the day, the younger people need to hear it. So I will end by saying this: definitely, if you are watching this, please take reparations seriously because at the end of the day, it's a real thing. We have been fucked for a very long time, and we need our opportunities to grow and to move forward. Yeah, someone like me can pull myself up by the bootstraps. Kyrie can be really good at basketball, make it to the lead, make millions of dollars. Same with Jay Williams. But everybody don't have them opportunities. The average everyday African-American black, however you want to define us, is struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling. And a lot of them don't have any hope because what they see is the drug dealers. What they see, they don't see opportunities. They don't have stores that pr- process is good food. Everything is fast food. Everything is liquor stores. And then you have the churches and that's a whole different conversation. And they're not really about the community or helping the community. So at the end of the day, we need business owners. And the best way and one of the most effective ways to do that is to provide loans to allow people to start businesses. And I think that could be the way that reparations are provided for our people. So I'm out. <laughs>